In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a basic blood splatter design using this template by Airshot Stencils. Let's get into it right now. Just using some one inch masking tape. This is an automotive tape. I'm going to place my template in the area where I want my splatters. If you're working on a smoother surface, then you can definitely utilize a spray adhesive, but for canvas, it doesn't stick as well, but it will help to sort of flatten it off a little bit. You can also work flat on the surface, just work down like that, and the weight of the template's gonna keep it flat. Now I've just put a strip of masking tape sort of half on to the paper. You can see there, the reason for this is then that can be used to mask up around my artwork and protect my canvas from overspray. So you're gonna go ahead and do that all around the canvas. So you may notice with these ones here, they've got that sharp edge where you can lay them on an edge of a design and then sort of have your splatters coming out. Because I've got them lifted off the canvas, I'm gonna go ahead and just mask up some of that area. So just curve the tape and get rid of any that you don't want to spray. I want to get rid of this one here so we don't have any sort of half splatters. There's still a few spots where the canvas is exposed. So I'll just use tape for those. Just check all the areas, make sure you're happy with it. So now what I want to do is get a flat tone of red on there. And because I'm angling down, I should be able to at least control some of that overspray. Just keep moving my fingers. It's going to take a few coats. Like I said, nice light coats. Build them up. Don't try and saturate it too quickly because it could bleed underneath. Okay, so now I want the blood splatter to be a little bit more three-dimensional. So I'm gonna use a bit of violet to shade it. Don't use black, black's way too harsh. You should pretty much never shade with black unless it's like a black and gray illustration. And then even so you wanna thin it down quite a bit, meaning not thin the paint, but reduce the opacity of it. You can see our violet there. I'm just gonna do a little shading on the lower edge and then a highlight will be on the top edge. So obviously some of the really small ones, I'm not gonna be able to add the shadow in and just sort of aim for the edge of the stencil. You don't have to go too heavy. The violet's just gonna blend nicely with the red. If you don't have violet, you could also use blue, given that majority of the paints are transparent and they're gonna mix on the surface. So the blue hitting the red will then give you the violet. So you can see I'm just concentrating on that lower edge and I'm following my splatters from lowest to highest, so from the bottom up. You can see I'm really aiming off the stencil, so I'm letting the overspray do the rest. And less is more, don't go too heavy. So don't try and be too close to the surface. Okay, so effectively what we've been doing is if this is our blood splatter, we've shaded here. So our light source is up here. And now I'm gonna run a highlight along the top here to make this look three dimensional. We don't wanna shade underneath, okay? We don't want the blood splatter to look like it's lifting off the canvas. We just want it to look like it's been splattered on the canvas, but they are 3D droplets. So let's go ahead and do some white. So adding white to the airbrush, this is already pre-thinned. Now most likely we're gonna have some overspray issues because this template is moving quite a bit, but I'll show you how to rectify that. So far it's looking pretty strange. 
but it's when you unmask it that you get the whole picture and then we'll see if it um, looks any good or not. Now for the fun part, unmasking it and I can see how I went and that's what happens when you miss a spot just in there. So pretty good on the smaller ones, a lot of the larger ones need a bit of work but that's okay, like I said I can fix that and as well I'm going to fix this. So using the red, just going to airbrush over the top of it and that's going to give me a new sharp edge. As you can see I'm coming in and doing this anywhere where I see that overspray which there is quite a bit. I'll block in certain sections and then just do a bit of stippling. Not ideal because it's just made the whole process a lot slower. It would have been much nicer just to have a nice clean edge and be done with it. Kind of glad it happened for this video because you get to see how to fix it if there is an issue. And for a little bit of added effect, you don't have to do this, but I thought I'll just add to it a little bit. Just dust a lighter layer of splatter. This will also help to hide that overspray if you do get it. And I'm just going about half of the intensity and I'm focusing more on these little dots rather than the bigger areas. Now on the main ones, I'm going to come in and actually do a brighter highlight. This will give it a bit more of a wet look. So essentially it's more of a dot white highlight and then it tapers off. You can see I'm up nice and close, I'm just building that white. Like I said earlier, this is a very thin mix so it needs a few good coats. But it also means I get less tip drying, which I'd much prefer. So you can see how that little bit of white makes a huge difference. So by going a bit brighter makes it a bit more three dimensional and gives it the appearance that it's a little bit wetter. So just on those larger droplets. The one thing to keep in mind is you've got to be consistent with your highlight and your shadow.
Okay, you'll notice here there's a bit of a template line. So when I was airbrushing earlier, I must have sort of spun this around and sprayed here and that little bit of overspray has put a faint edge there, which I want to get rid of. Easy enough to do. We're going to add some more of these subtle splatters. So just work back over the top, line it up where you want it and make sure you run from the center of the template this time so that I don't get any more overspray because you don't want to fix an issue with another issue. This one will be good because I can kind of run that along it like so and that's going to get rid of it pretty easily. A little bit more and leave it at that. Close up of the blood splatter and see the different layers the stenciled one as well as that second layer which is the lighter version. So definitely a handy effect, one that you can utilize in loads of different artworks. And to continue your learning, be sure to check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.